So moving on to some more DBZ news, uh, interestingly, somehow DBZ has crossed into politics. Now, we don't talk about politics on this channel, and we're going to continue that. Uh, however, we will talk about it when it becomes necessary. So last episode, our last, um, yeah, it was last episode, our last story of the episode was us talking about star, uh, the, the voice actress for Leia in Star Wars Resistance actually saying something inappropriate about the Judge Kavanaugh hearings. Which was like, whoa, what the fuck? So, in this case, though, it's not going to be that what the fuck worthy, thankfully. Uh, we're we talking about... News. What? We have fun news. But... Well, actually, okay, it is what the fuck worthy, but in the fun category. So, right. a, a composer for the Dragon Ball Z, uh, specifically for the one of the dub soundtracks, because there have been many different composers that have come on to work with Dragon Ball Z's soundtracks over the years. Uh, nowadays, it seems like Funimation just uses the Japanese track and calls it a day, which I'm not saying that that's bad, but it seems like I don't think that Funimation creates like uh, U.S. tracks for, uh, for Battle of Gods or Super. Right. I'm pretty sure they don't, right? I'm pretty sure they just use the Japanese track and they're good. Right? I haven't actually seen what's been on the DVDs. Okay. I think so. Oh, no, 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 sorry. Um, I have that old god. Uh, um, <laughs> yes, I'm pretty sure it's still the Japanese score, if I remember correctly. Okay, cool. That, and again, that's newer stuff. But of course, back in the day, they used to have different composers come on. So, Nathan Johnson. Why is this political anyway? Well, Nathan Johnson actually won a Texas Senate seat as a, as I'm pretty sure it's a Democrat. So he won it as a Democrat, which is just so odd because everyone's like, but like, wait, what? <laughs> well, because it was just so strange because, you know, of course we had, you know, we had Ted Cruz, Beto O'Rourke, again, not getting into that, but still, like, everyone was focusing on that. And then all right. of a sudden it was just like, actually, uh, since so like, on the side here, it kind of feels like one of those, like a Dragon Ball Z moment where it's just like, you have Ted Cruz and Beto O'Rourke fighting in the sky. But don't worry, because across the earth, we currently had Senator Don Huffins losing his re-election bid to lawyer and composer Nathan Johnson. Right. Just multiple fights happening at once. All of them powering Majin Buu's energy. Majin Buu will come back and run in 2020. So, um, Majin oh Buu, Majin Buu will just run on chocolate! And just... Boo make you candy. Yeah, just, boo make you candy! Just a bunch of, just a bunch of people out there, like, he's saying what we're all thinking. Wait, what? Right, um, like, um, sir, I think there might be a problem with the, uh, with our candidate's, uh, slogan. Well, yeah. what's that? Uh, you do, I think there may have been a mix-up here. Uh, when he says, boo make you candy... He wasn't talking about making his constituents candy. He was talking about actually literally turning them into candy and consuming them. It's a cookbook! Uh, anyway. I, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but anyway. How funny is it, though? So not only was he elected, I think the reason why I find this funny, too, is because apparently he became an anime composer almost by accident. By the way, the, the article will be posted down below, but apparently by accident. So he was, he was actually, he was looking for uh, legal office space to rent. And then apparently he was in a phone call somehow with Funimation co-founder Robert Kukonar. Kukonar. Cacophony. So, Robbie, I don't know him, Robbie... No, but he was all just side. He was in a he was in a, um, a a phone call with him somehow that he would that he wanted because he wanted to use a space for his law office and then made a joke about he was like oh I might throw an electric keyboard in there and make some musical noise and apparently Kakana Kakana was like hey we're just starting shit up here right. so why the fuck not because the reason why I say starting shit up here is because of the fact that. Uh, he actually, by the way, so also another thing too, funny, funny enough, Johnson never saw Dragon Ball Z before, before actually getting the job and composing for it. So that's also right. interesting. But uh, the reason why I say started earlier on is because he's only worked on uh, the episodes 1 to 67, which he did as part of Funimation's Ultimate Uncut Special Edition Redub. So I imagine that's the orange box sets. And uh, he also did the music for five Dragon Ball Z film dubs which I assume are the first five. 
Um, they don't list any. They don't list which ones here, which are awkward. Which I'll, so I'll try to find them uh, as we're talking about this. But still, the point though is, is that it seems like he started very early on. Like I, right. I don't, and he didn't. I don't think he was also, with Faulkner because they would have right. mentioned it if he was. Yeah. Also working on episodes one through sixty-seven. No, I mentioned that, yeah. but the, oh, yeah, yeah, the orange box set. Yeah, the ultimate cut, the ultimate uncut special edition readout. I'm assuming that's the box sets, right? I don't know. Because I don't know what else they would call it. <laughs> Hear the clacking of a keyboard. When it comes to Dragon Ball Z, Tristan, like, I will leave no stone unturned. Yeah, exactly. So yes, he composed for the DBZ dub, but he was not bru he was not working with Falconer. Um, yeah, it is Falconer. He was not working with Falconer in any way. But still, it is really funny. Yeah. Uh, like, I, and the reason why I say it's so funny is just because, like, I don't know, dude, just, like, out of nowhere, it's just like, hey, remember Dragon Ball Z? Uh, yes, we do. <laughs> we, we definitely do. Yeah, so that guy, uh, he, got a, he got a Senate seat. What? Yeah, in Texas. Well, I guess that would make sense that he worked on Dragon Ball Z, but what? Like, because, you know, Funimation's in, a, in, in the heart of Texas. I don't know if it's in the heart of Texas, but it's in Texas. So Tristan, uh, which which box set is it? I assume you uh, looked up. Oh, okay. Ha. Huh. No, this is actually not the orange box. Oh, I'm interested. Uh, it is. These were put on DVD. They were. Were they were they like four episode volumes or something or? Um, I think so. Maybe not. Um, T tell me what the name is again. It's the DVZ Ultimate. Ultimate Uncut, yeah. Ultimate, Ultimate Uncut, Uncut Edition. Special Edition. Because I'm um, curious. Because. Oh, these! Oh, I have these! Yeah, they released yeah, them as four-episode I mean, volumes. You would recognize it as, saw, as soon as you saw the cover. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's odd to me is, did these not... Now I actually have to go into my collection, because I have some of these, but I also have some of these in Spanish. Because right. they were like a dollar a piece or something, and they were selling some of these in Spanish, the first few. I'm pretty sure I have some in English as well. But I'm going to look at them, because I'm wondering if... They actually, like, if he actually composed for not just these, but if these transferred over to the orange box sets. Because the orange box sets are also uncut. Yeah. So it would be odd if it's different, um, different music for both. Also, I assume with the first five movies, that was when they went back to redo Dragon Ball Z, Dead Zone, Tree of Might, World's Strongest, Lord Slug, and Cooler's Revenge. Right. Or maybe he did those first three, because I know those first three, they got they, they got a look that was very similar to the um, those those four episode volumes. Because you can see the font even is actually similar. Like when you right. Google them, you'll see that the font and the layout and the and the foil, the way it's like fake foily, uh, it like three D ish, it's similar. So that's very interesting. But yeah, so again, he did not ever work with Bruce Faulkner. Um, and I think it's just, again, like I said earlier, it's really funny. Do you find this as funny as I do, Tristan? Like, just out of nowhere? Like, when I... Did you know about this before I sent it to you? Um, yeah, no, I definitely heard about this. Okay. What was going on. <laughs> How confusing is it? Um, I mean, it's... I think it's just one of those things... Like, it's kind of an interesting, it's like, here's a fun fact, and yeah. you also know he did this. It's like... I, I think it's just funny to me because, like, they also got him in to kind of fill in, like, when they needed someone to compose, like, those 67 episodes. They're like, shit, we need someone to do the English track for this because the, uh, the rest right. of the series has English tracks. Yeah, it's like yeah. one of those word and mouth kind of thing. It's like, <laughs> looking for a job. Hey, you looking for a job? Uh... It's Maybe, yeah. kind of, not yeah. really. Great, you're hired. Uh, what am I doing? Well, you're doing this. Oh, I oddly have a background in that, sort of. You know what this comes oh, off as? Hired. You, you already said I was hired. <laughs> Great, you're hired. All right. 
This comes off as one of those stories on the playground that you think someone's lying about. Right, yeah. And then you look up years later and you're like, oh damn, they were right. That's what this sounds like to me. Like, it just seems like it's a complete joke. Like, come on, guys, where's the punchline? It's like, no, he composed all those episodes, and he also is now a senator. Right. All right. I mean, to be fair, that was, what was that? When those were being re-released, that was like 12 years ago. Yeah, so it's been three. Yeah, it's been 12 years since he touched this stuff. He's been clean to Dragon Ball Z for like 12, 13 years. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> but, uh, no, no but. I'm sad. <laughs> I mean, in terms of being a composer. And to be fair, I, uh, yeah. I didn't hate his work. It's just his work, if I remember correctly, was just. It, w- it needed to be there because, again, the rest of the show, you know, when they brought on Falconer, like, he worked on 68 to the rest of Z. But right. with those first 67 episodes, that's when they were working with Ocean Dub. Yeah. And so that was like the Shuki Levy composition. So that was like the dun-dun-dun-dun with like the weird right. sci-fi-y undertones. Yeah. Like with the weird beeps and boops and shit. It was very interesting, that, that track. Uh, that's, the, that's the same dub that had like Frieza just like grabbing the balls. Oh, if Ginyu, if you were, if you were a cat, I would give you warm milk. That... Those lines, that right. was that was Ocean Dub before, yeah. that was like in the 50s, maybe like 53, 54, I think? Right. Uh, yeah, so, either way, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's a thing. So, I don't know what else to say about this, Tristan. I don't know where else we can go f- from here. It's just a fun yeah. fact. So, I hope... I hope you guys like this fun fact that we've reported to you. A uh, very rather odd fact. And other than getting political, tell me what you guys think down below. Do you like uh, his work on DBZ? Do you think it was just average at best? It just kind of needed to be there to fill space? I want to know what you guys think. Do you guys have these DVDs in your collection? If you looked up the same ones that we looked up, are you guys like, oh, actually, I have that in my collection? Because uh, I don't know what you could do with them after buying them. Because they were just random four-episode volumes. You're not going to sell those for for anything over a few bucks. Even if you have a full set, I'm not going to pay, like, you know, 30, 40, 50 yeah. bucks for a whole right. set of those. So either way, tell me what you guys think down below because I would love to hear what you guys have to say.